In this video, we are going to discuss how to find the domain and range. So first of all, domain is all the possible input. So typically we use x for the input. So when we find domain and we're given a graph, we're going to look at the graph always from the left to the right, from the negative to the positive side. That's how we always read a graph, left to right. Okay, then we have the range, and the range are all the possible output. So typically, we use y for output. And since the y-axis goes vertical, goes up and down here, the negative is the bottom. So we always go from negative to positive. So we're going to read the graph from the bottom to the top. So from the bottom to the top. So I'll talk more about what this means in a moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at number one. Number one is just a set of ordered pairs. So if I want to know what the domain is, the domain are all the x values. So when we write ordered pairs, x's are always first. So remember the curly bracket here means the set and all the numbers for x. So we could put at least the greatest, we could just list them. So one negative 2, 4, and negative 3. Those are all the x values. Okay, then the range are all the y values. So 6, 5, 17, and then I already have 6, so I'm not going to list it again. It's already part of the list. Okay, let's go ahead and try example two. So domain are all the x values, so that's the first number. So we have two, we have negative four, we have two, I already have that, and then we have six. Okay, then we have the range, those are all the y values. So we have three, negative five, five, and then negative 5 is already there, and those are our range values. So I remember this, x comes before y in the alphabet, and d comes before r. So that's how I remember domain goes with x, because it comes before in the alphabet, and y comes after, just like range does in the alphabet. Okay, so examples 1 and 2 are just lists. Because there was no graph provided, we only know that those points are the only points that are in the set. However, example three here has more, has an infinite amount of points because it has these arrows here and they're connected. That means everything, we can't list these, there's too many, it's an infinite amount of ordered pairs here. So that's when we're going to need the left to right and the bottom to the top so that we can write our answers in interval notation. So domain, remember, is left to right. So you look at the graph on the left side to the right side. So on the left side of this graph, it keeps going and going. I know that this looks like down, but it's on the left. It keeps going and going and going out to the left. So we're going to put negative, because this is the negative side of the graph, infinity, because it keeps going on the left. So if you look at the arrows or you look at the ends of the graph on the left side, if there's arrows, it means it keeps going. Then you go to the right side, there's an arrow, so that means it's going to keep going and going right. And this is the positive side, so that's why we're going to put a positive infinity. And we always put parentheses around the infinity when we write our answers in interval notation. Now the range is from the bottom to the top. So we look at the graph at the bottom, and I see an arrow at the bottom. And the top, I also see an arrow. That means at the bottom, it keeps going down. So the numbers on the bottom are all negative. And the numbers on the top are all positives, and it keeps going and going and going. So the domain and range are both all real numbers. OK, 
Okay, let's go ahead and try another example here. So remember the domain is from the left to the right side. So if you look at the left, there's an arrow. When there's an arrow on the left, it means the graph keeps going and going and going. So the left side are the negatives, so we put negative infinity. Then we go to the right side of the graph, so from the left to the right, and on the right side there is no arrow. That means it doesn't keep going. And the x value right here is four. We're gonna put a bracket because it's solid right there. That means it's included. The graph goes to four. Okay, now the range is from the bottom to the top. So if we look at the bottom of the graph, the graph will never go down here. The bottom of the graph is right here. It never goes below. There's no arrow going down. So this is the most bottom point right here. And this point right here is at four comma zero. So the four is the X. The range is all the Y values. So this point right here is the most bottom point and the Y value is zero. So the lowest Y value here is at the origin is zero. Now I'm gonna use a bracket because it's solid. This point right here that goes to zero right here is solid. And then as we go to the top of the graph right here, it doesn't stop here at two. It keeps going and going and going. So there's an arrow at the top that keeps going. So we're gonna put an infinity symbol because the numbers at the top are all positive. So even though these numbers are negative, it's going, it's, we're not looking at the left and the right, we're looking at bottom to top. So it starts here at zero and then it keeps going up the graph. And we always put a parenthesis around infinity. All right, now if we take a look at example five, example five looks like numbers one and number two. It's just a set of points. So instead of interval notation, we are gonna use our set notation. And so domain is all the X values. So I'm gonna list all the X values. So this ordered pair right here, the X value here is negative three. This one is negative two. Here, this is one. This point has an X of one. This point here has a X of two. And this point right here has an X of five. So those are all the X values for the domain. Now the range are all the Y values. So this time I'm gonna take the point and I'm gonna look at the Y values. So negative five. This point right here on the X axis has the origin, so zero. Both of these points right here have a y of one, so I'm only gonna list it once, and this point has a y of four. So again, here we're making a list because it's just a set of points, they're not connected. Whereas these two, we have to use interval notation because we are including everything in between.